My topic is on the scaffold non-union. Uh, probably I like to say uh, evidence-based approach or how should I approach, how I approach. Uh, these are my disclosures. We all know that the concept of scaphoid non-union protocol keeps changing right from 1946 to 2023 and hope so in also in the future. What we know is we don't have consensus on scaphoid non-union or scaphoid fractures which may go for a union. So Joe Dice once said that you show me the scaphoid fracture or in an XA, it's very difficult to say it's healed or not. On the additional, on the contrary, yields, even if you show a scaphoid fracture united, there might be difference in opinion between two different operating surgeons. One say it's united, others say it's partially united. So meaning to say that scaphoid non-union and the union is also very difficult to diagnose. Uh, I like this slide because you know, Gerdelstone once said that the bone is something like a plant with its roots and soft tissue where its vascular connections are damaged, then it requires not the work of the you know cabinet maker, something like a gardener. You need to garden the you know, the scaphoid with its vascular connection or you need to garden the scaphoid to heal or to go for union. We all know that the intraocular supply is precarious in scaphoid non-union and one of the reason for going for AVN. Other predisposing factors that uh, seen is told that uh, most of the scaphoid fractures, around 80 to 90 percent, they unite well with treatment and with conservative. So we have only 5 to 10 percent of these patients who have scaphoid non-union and where we need some treatment. The possibility could be that the patient had a displaced fracture or other comorbidities like delayed diagnosis and treatment. So as I mentioned, the problem is only 5 to 20 percent. There will be pain, restriction of movement and limitations of activities. And these are the cases where uh, the X-rays and the MRI and CT scans are helpful in diagnosing the fractures. CT will help you to understand the tubercular pattern and the MRI will help you to differentiate whether these patients have AVN or not. And then the grading is also equally important because you should also know whether there's any associated deformity or what sort of non-union is there, whether it's a vascular non-union or a fibrous non-union or even a complete collapse and then it has a bone cyst or not. So this non-union is also important when you grade this according to this slate. So ultimate treatment is to get the bone union, correct any deformity. This deformity can be because of a humback deformity and stabilize the carpus bone. A rigid fixation is ideal and this relieves the symptoms and probably the future arthritis. Challenges we have is lack of consensus. We have few couple of hand surgeons here. We have ourselves our own surgical technique and our own surgical expertise. So we can't force you to say this is the ideal treatment. But there is a consensus, general consensus. You need to fix the fracture, probably with a vascularized or non-vascularized bone graft. That will allow you to heal. So there are concepts where you say that screw alone can do a good fixation and can give a good union. So this is one a series of et al. from uh, Ikida and Hegesi. They found that a stable non-union of scaphoid screw fixation alone does well. Similarly, this is a medical year student who came with failed conservative management of six months. And what we did was just a percutaneous fixation and this fracture healed well at six months. This is the follow-up of the same patient. So again, the question also arises whether we should do non-vasculase or vasculase bone graft. I think there's a paradigm shift which everybody will understand or everybody will agree with me. We are moving towards a non-vasculase bone graft. The concept of vasculase bone graft has been limited to specific indications. So I think good news is here that you can use non-vasculase bone graft in most of the scaphoid non-unions when it's indicated. So we have this patient with scaphoid non-union of nine months old. What you could do is, these are the MRIs, and what you could do is we harvest a chunk of uh, non-vascularized cortical graft from the distal radius, just put it in, in between the scaphoid non-union site and then we fix to get this functional outcome. Similarly, again a 25-year-old man where we had a strut graft from the distal radius interposed between the scaphoid non-union site and this was the uh, follow-up where you could get. Similarly, again there's a patient of two years non-union where a strut graft was used. The limitations of strut graft alone without fixation is that it could be, uh, it needs a long period of immobilization and probably it's inconsistent with avian uh, conditions. So there is a role for vasculase bone graft because it is, a, it is an osteogenic progenitors. It gives some sort of blood supply and also have a graft which does not uh, resorb, just sort of stability can be obtained from vasculase bone graft. So there are types of vasculase bone graft where it could be a pedicle bone graft or it could be free vasculase bone graft. And fixation modalities are also like upgrading. We have a study from Eugene et al. They say that you do a plating or do a uh, two scaphoid uh, screws, the more or less the biomechanical strength from a union is also good. The union is also good in these cases. The other possibility is that we also know that 
assessing post-operative scan, the post-operative yield is mostly by the CT scan. So what we also propose that a hyper Doppler ultrasound is also helpful, equally helpful to assess the union of scaphoid. This is a quick uh, slide. So how we do this hyper Doppler in post-operative patients of CT, uh, scaphoid non-union, we compared with the CT scan and also the, uh, the Doppler power Doppler. We found that both the results are equal. We could get the graphs and we could publish the series in JHS uh, British. A quick couple of uh, cases here, a scaphoid non-union which was treated with one, two intercompartmental pedicle vasculase bone graft, and this patient did well. We also found that postoperatively the union was confirmed by hyperdoppler, and this is the functional head of movement at the follow up. Similarly, the case two with scaphoid non union with a collapse in the cyst and also a hemback deformity. What we could do is curate the cavity, put a vasculase bone graft there, and this was the union, and this was the final follow up. Again, this could be confirmed with the non vasculase bone graft. This is an interesting case where he could not see a scaphoid uh, fracture at the uh, presentation at 2016. 2016 December, the scaphoid fracture was diagnosed with a CT scan. The patient did not have any treatment. 2017, this is the series where there is sort of collapse and sort of deformities happening around the scaphoid non-even. 2018, this developed into avian. So this is what serial X-ray we had. And uh, I performed a vascularized bone graft in this patient. And this was the post-operative CT, which compared with the power Doppler. So more or less, they say that this fracture is going to union with all these features. Uh, immediate post-op, fourth month, and in six years of follow-up, he is doing well. So this could be published here uh, in this. So this is one interesting study which we did with uh, Scott Wolf, who is the uh, author of the Green's Operative Hand Surgery. We found there are certain predictors which say that these are the reasons where the vasculase bone graft or a non-vasculase bone graft tend to fail. Uh, Non-vasculase bone graft tend to fail with delayed presentations. Vasculase bone graft has to be carefully done if it is a humpback deformity. Also, we found say, certain case of rare injuries where there is a perilunate fracture dislocation with a proximal scaphoid attached to the lunate. Here, what happens is this scaphoid is being lying there for more than four years with perilunate dislocations. What we need to do is just reduce this fracture, and then you could put a, a screw fixation there, and. Uh, this is how it comes. So the scaphoid is completely intact with the lunate. We just need to fix with the uh, distal scaphoid and this is how this fracture united. So we also know that there are certain number of patients who are still have a scaphoid non-union but they do well. So we revisited retrospectively 20 patients who had scaphoid non-union. They are happy. They don't want any surgery. So this is one interesting study we found that all, not all scaphoid non-union does need surgery, but there are certain indications where if you have collapse, we call it snack deformity, they might land up with arthritis and then they do well. This is one patient who we call as happy scaphoid non-union. She does not come to me for the scaphoid problem, rather he came to some other problem. So we need to say that these scaphoid non-unions, they do well if you don't even manage for longer durations. Certain cases, they have problem where you need to have surgery. The other last component is that distal scaphoid non is also rare, but it is reported. So we also have a series of distal scaphoid non -union. What we found is that this is a medical student who came with the distal scaphoid non here. What we did is we put them on conservative management. Even though it has looked like non fragmentations and collapse and deformity, this healed well. Um.